human artistic expression is our culture in motion. Art has the power to move minds, and it even has the power to change the course of our destiny. However, when a human creation becomes mass-produced, it quickly loses its validity as art to eventually be cast aside. However, if such an object is found again, it can be reframed in a different light, being repurposed for new eyes to revere. And so, a sculptor breathes new life into objects that would otherwise end up in a landfill, setting forever in motion that which was once laid to rest. Enter the whimsical, the absurd, the innovative, the perpetual. Enter the Matt Bevel Museum of Kinetic Art. Be sure to subscribe and click the little bell that sends you notifications from this channel. Hey, Ned. How you doing? Good, 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 good. Wow, it's pretty noisy in here. Yeah, well, that's what I'm doing. I'm oiling everything right now. Oh, know? the oil. It's a, it's a constant, constant yeah. maintenance on this kind of... So, Ned, what was your inspiration to start making all this? Well, uh, actually, I was a printmaker at the time, and I instead of getting a gallery to do a show, I accidentally got a theater, so I started making prints of mine moving in kinetic, using junk, and I sort of just got addicted to that. I just started finding objects, and I moved to New York City, and I kept finding things and putting them together. Then I started wearing them on my head. I never thought about doing it, it was just that all these weird contraptions started making themselves. So it was very organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I claim that these items found their way to my doorstep and I gave them a new life in theater. For urgency of the agency, for crisis emergency, through urging the urgency of an emergency. Hey, I was wondering if you would explain to me and show me you know, how some of these work and how you put some of these things together. Well, uh, if you don't mind. Sure, yeah. If we look in the back, oh, you have this string that pulls up and down. Nature, you don't have to have a motor. You know, a waterfall is just like a battery. In the old days, they'd find a waterfall and put a meal there, and it's like where you're looking for energy in the world, like wave energy. Mm -hmm. You're looking for some place in the world where there's already two distances moving apart, and you can pull a string by doing that. So it, it by the rotating fan pulls the string up and down and makes the butterfly. So I, my idea was that I was going to make these and sell them and become rich. City of Tucson commissioned you oh, yeah, to yeah, build a yeah. giant one of these. Right. A little different flying mechanism. All right. Over here we got the intellectual plane. This has flapping wings. So this is the motor. No, the motor's down here. The oh, the you, motor's down here. The thing you can smell. The motor makes this wheel go around and then there's this complicated thing here so that the, the propellers actually turn in different directions. And but it actually flaps while they're turning, so you have to make a wheel right at the pivot point. So you have one motor Motors that powers the whole thing with the, the system yeah. of pulleys. You're, you're always dealing with friction and torque. You're using strings on pulleys, and you're always trying to deal with like how far, when you're making pistons or how big of a wheel, how far it is away from the center, the torque. And engineers design things to work perfectly. And I'm not doing that. There's no reason for people to sort of develop things like this. Yeah. So I'm at the mercy of the materials. I only use what I have. So I was uh, teaching a kindergarten class in Yuma, Arizona. And uh -huh. I was first making a waving hand. I wanted to make a hand that waved and it kept evolving. And then after a few days, it turned into what looked like a duck. And I put the scissors, those are kindergarten scissors. Look at that. And when I first did it, that's when the mouth opened, and they all freaked out. And after I had to rebuild it, it was sort of hard to get that back again, but it was a total accident that it was tilted right at the right place. When you're using these found objects, these things just start coming to me, and then things start fitting together, and then these, I start wearing them in stories, but really it's more spiritual than that. You're like, you're driving down the street, and it's like God puts this old swimming pool, like ladder thing, like, 
and it's exactly what you need. Every item, whether it's a rock or a part of a bicycle, wants to be reused. That's the whole being a, a, a humble artist. The truth is you have to feel like you're truly a servant of God. Mm. I have nothing to do with this, really. My shows are full of poetry, but I use words like found objects. From the frontierism of infinite domain, where the planet was... A mad daddy who thought about things he didn't have to. So my theater is not based around the words, it's based on this, like, mm. the evolution of these pieces. And it's as if there's a story under there that I'm uncovering. I could not even talk to people growing up, really. I'm very unsocial, you know. I'd be the last person you would ever expect to be a performer. I have this fluidity when I do that, but if I go to a party, you know, I yeah. can't talk to people. That's how it is for a lot of performers, is that's how they relate right. to people. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. And when it comes to just regular socializing, right. they're not very good. Right. No, but, you're safe on stage. Yeah. I'm shooting right now, Flicka. Oh wow, green screen, and you got some nice lights here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're nice and hot, they're old. Oh, so this is what you're shooting right now. So, Ned has started a YouTube channel for his Matt Bevel art, his performance art with his sculptures, and it's pretty awesome, I've seen it, so you can subscribe to him right there. And Hey, thank you guys for watching. We're meant to have relationships with the world which are more important than our relationships with people. And if a kid goes off on his own, they think they, they start medicating him or something. They think that there's something wrong with him. But all your scientists, all your geniuses, mechanical geniuses are all over there playing by themselves because humans are meant to have relationships with materials. I could sum up what you just said by saying there's nothing wrong with being introverted. Oh, yeah.